Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Tuesday, March 26th, 2019. I hope you guys had a wonderful Monday, and I hope your week is going well so far. Um, so this is going to be a general energy reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like to, a look into your own personal situation, as always, you can always email me. Uh, all the information is in the description box below. Also, um, this is not anything specific, okay? This is not love specific, uh, sign specific, or anything that like that. And energies are fluid. So just because this is a message that's coming through today, it doesn't mean it has to resonate today or it has to be something that's happening today, yes? It, it could be in the from the past it could be something from the future it may not be anything for you at all but that's okay it is a general reading um one quick note i am now going to be at collective here in new york city on first street between a second and third avenues and um, i'm going to be there every saturday doing readings um, from 3 p.m at least until 8 p.m and we are setting something up where if you would like to um, book a session in advance, you are very welcome to do so. All you have to do is just email Chloe, um, and her email is going to be is in the description box below. You can email her and book your session, 20-minute sessions for $40, yes? Also, another quick note, um, and this is something that's going to be on the that you're going to see in the april monthly readings in the in the info the description there but um i am going to be at awaken fair this year and in tarrytown and you are also able to pre-book those sessions as well either 15 or 30 minutes i'll be doing readings there it's on april 28th in tarrytown new york that's in westchester county and if you would like to pre-book a session, the link for that is also in the description box below. Okay? Excellent. So, without further ado, let's just get to today's reading. Mm. All right, here we go, guys. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collection at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Tuesday, March 26th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. I totally just got a little distracted because I realized yesterday was my aunt's birthday and I forgot to say something about it. Boo! That's okay. I'll send her a message today. <laughs> All right. Tuesday, March 26th. What you got for us today, spirit? Best messages, please. Whatever you would like to discuss with us today angels of love and light guardian angels archangels ascended masters spirit guides way showers ancestors those who wish to help aid us on our journeys who want to help uplift us and help us ascend what is it that you would like to speak with us about today last shuffle here huh okay well the high priestess just caught my attention so good we're channeling correctly I would say that's a sign I'd say yeah one more sip mm. okie dokie best messages today please spirit whatever it is you would like to discuss with us today shadow work Ooh. Yes, 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 yes. Moon child, all right. Anything else, spirit? Huh. 
Well, that seems to be it. Interesting. Just two cards today, huh? All right. Underneath the deck. Oh, yes. The sun. All right. This is beautiful. Now, I am going to, because these are the only two cards that came out here, I'm going to, um, I'm going to go to the book because these are actually two of a, a set of unique cards. I think, I believe there's about five. Ooh, whoa. I believe, I'm sorry. I did a bit of a workout this morning before I started my reading. So now my body's a little shaky. My muscles are a little shaky, but anyway, um, I think there's like about five of them in this deck. This is the moon child tarot. Okay. Um, I love this deck. It's so gorgeous. But uh, already, let me just speak to you know what I'm I intuitively intuitively picking up on, um, and what I already know these cards to mean. But that I am going to go into the book just to get some more specifics. Moon Child. Moon Child talks about the phases of the moon, also the phases of yourself um, and your own cycles and you know, learning from those cycles and, and growing and expanding from those cycles. Obviously, shadow work is something many of us are very, very familiar with, okay? This is about um, facing your shadow and not continuing to try and push it away or demonize it or make it out to be some terrible piece or part of yourself. It's all about integrating your shadow, yes? What is your shadow? Your shadow um, is a part of yourself that contains fragmented pieces of your being, um, painful memories. It's the side of you that has, I guess you could say, basically been warped by negative experiences, painful experiences, um, and it contains your fears. Um, you know, your deepest, darkest fears. It's like your inner demons, yes, but this is not a part of you that needs to be ostracized or demonized or destroyed, um, disconnected from, quite the contrary. This is the side of you that is needing integration. And the more you push it away, the worse the symptoms get, the worse the side effects get, I guess you can say. Um, the more you're haunted by it, right? It is very much a piece of your wholeness, right? So many of us, um, or many of the people that I've been connecting with uh, on this channel are familiar with the twin flame situation and uh, the twin flame journey. And one of the central parts of that journey is about becoming whole, okay? Um, again, because it's not like we, we weren't whole before, but you know, of course, life fragments us, fragments us, and that's where we learn our lessons, okay? So, um, and then of course, the sun, I mean, the sun is a beautiful, beautiful card. It is the most optimistic card in the deck. Um, you do have a little bit of a counterpart situation. This isn't officially the moon. The moon child isn't officially the moon, but it is speaking to the counterpart to the sun, which is the moon. So that's cool. Um, but the sun here is speaking to illumination. Many of us have been going through a period of deep, deep shadow work. And I am absolutely one of those people, okay? Um, I mean... It's been really, really rough, but I, I and, and I'll share I'll share a little bit of my personal experience so that you guys can get some sort of pers uh, perspective on what I'm talking about of how intense this shadow work period has been. Um, ever since that full moon, that super full moon in Virgo, what was that? February. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've just been in, I was thrown into the depths of my shadow. And I was often saying that I felt like I was back in the mindset that I had been in when I was like a teenager and in my early 20s. I'm 31 now, I'm gonna be 32 in May. But um, 
I was thrown back into that time period and that mindset and it was painful. It was super, super painful. But this time it was different because I had, I guess you could say life experience enough to pull myself out of it when I was ready to, but pull myself out of it in a much more effective way to illuminate a lot of the cycles and the reasons why I had these complexes and these fears and um, healing my heart and learning to love myself. I would not have been able to do that in the past. I just was not prepared for it. The life that I have lived and the experiences that I've had up in, over the last 30 years of my life have helped me to get to the point where now that I was thrown back into that shadow, I could effectively rise up from it and have a stronger foundation within myself through that experience. And that is what the sun is speaking to, that type of illumination, okay? So obviously I'm not, I, I'm, 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 I mean, it's kind of obvious to me that I, I'm not the only one going through this because I'm, I'm pulling for the collective here and um, part of the collective that I've been channeling for. And many of you have been saying that you've been going through a lot of the same things. So the sun is coming out, you guys, especially this is great in time for spring. I mean, spring has sprung. This is such a beautiful energy. I'm I'm really grateful for it. And to be honest, I'm grateful for the opportunity i mean it was rough in it was rough during the situation and i'm still not completely out of it yet but i'm much better than i was um and i'm slowly building myself back up but it already this is i'm really grateful for the experience so let me read a little bit about these cards here we're going to start with moon child uh, keywords, magic, ritual, connection, abundance, manifestation. Inquiry, how can I connect with the wisdom of the moon? What moon phase am I currently in at this time? So the moon, this card says, when this card shows up, it asks you to consider how you can cultivate your own sacred relationship with the moon. This luminous beacon functions as a great celestial doorway into new spaces and opportunities within and around you, helping you see beyond the limitations of your lived reality. Through keeping track of her ebb and flow, as well as our feelings and sensations each day, we can refine our intuition and boundaries each month to help support more informed choices when it comes to our heart. Are there energies that need to be released? Is it time to start a new project? What is internally or externally inhibiting you from rising, growing, or healing? How are you delaying your own productivity? Since Mama Luna also illuminates our shadows, she helps us glean meaning and potency from the darker moments in our lives, the mistakes, the heartache, the falling and failure, but instead of these burdens, she sees diamonds of potential for, uh, forged within the fires of our deepest dimensions, pushing and pulling us to wise up to our layers, provoking us to feel all the feels and express them at times with utter lunacy. But don't fret, there is a method to her madness. And if you've been following Betsy, my very dear friend um, of Felix intuition she was speaking to during this mercury and retrograde this is not a time to be logical you have to just feel through your emotions trying to be logical about whatever it is you're is coming up for you is only going to make it more difficult right she brings out our most raw human expressions and allows us to transmute them from within after this we may become energetically lighter softer and prepared for the dawn, knowing how far we have come and how far we can go. Where would you like to take with, wait. Oh, where would you like to journey with her next? <laughs> okay. So now, I mean, that's already super perfect, but now we have 
we have, um, sorry guys, I'm a little distracted at the moment, uh, shadow work. There it is, shadow work. Keywords, illumination, balance, synergy, healing, acceptance, inquiry. What deeper habits are ready for my awareness? Where is my shadow presenting itself the most? Within each of us is a shadow self, a multifaceted inner vessel of the pains, traumas, fears, and suppressions we have experienced throughout our life. Very often, we think of the shadow as something negative or malevolent, as the world itself conjures up themes of darkness or fear. I'm sorry, as the word, as the word itself conjures up themes of darkness or fear. But if we look a bit closer, we may find that our shadows are the ultimate liberators, acting as the most profound catalysts for aligning with our truth. Like the dark matter of our universe and the great cosmic womb, dreams and seeds of light may be cultivated here as healing and creation may be birthed through cycles and doorways of revolutionary change. Our shadows can help anchor our own brilliance and self-worth in teaching us to rise and transmute from the ashes that divide us from within. This may happen when we release our hidden burdens or remove the masks of the personas we continuously hide behind, allowing us to, delve, to dive deeper within the waters of our heart. The obscure aspects of our shadow also show us where our thoughts or habits have become entrenched or addictive over time, which is helpful when looking at how and where we may need to make some profound changes in our life. Oh, that's it. I mean, yes. And then to top that all off, you've got the sun, which is the illumination. The happiness, the success, the well-being. <sighs> I do have to say that um, even though the last, pfft, we're just gonna go ahead and call it the last two months because we're at the, oh no. We'll just say a month. Because it really has been from that last, I mean, for me personally, for you guys, it, for any of you, it could be maybe the last two months, maybe the last few months. Actually, if we're going to be honest with you, if I'm going to be honest with you, it has been the last few months. We're going to, I'm going to say like about since December. Mm-hmm. For me, at least. Um, it's just been really rough. But I'm very grateful for it because ultimately it's helped me grow and it's helped me learn and it's helped me really break free from a lot of the, 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 the entrenchment, the, the things that I've been, the cycles, the mental cycles, the belief systems, blah, blah, blah. Like I thought I had broke away from a lot of it, but it turns out I was just kind of glossing over it. You know, I never, I didn't actually really break out of it. And now I'm, I sure hope I am now, <laughs> although my, my, the way that I'm viewing things is changing at this point, but so I personally, I am very grateful for it. I hope you guys can find a way to be grateful for it too, because honestly, when you come out of it on the other side, it does feel much, much better. So um, I do feel like some of you are kind of getting to the peak of this now. Um, Maybe some of you are just starting off on starting out in this spot, um, but many of us have been going through this for some time. <sighs> okay. Next, let's get some clarification going here. We're gonna split these up. We're gonna we're gonna talk about Moonchild first, and then we're gonna talk about shadow work. And um, I'm using the Epic Tarot for this. One more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got.
Okay, spirit. Just some clarification, please. Starting with Moonchild. I'm gonna leave it there. Oh, wow. Okay, that's beautiful. Okay, uh, underneath the deck is the Three of Swords. And then we have the Ten of Swords with the Hanged Man. So, obviously, we're talking about the heartbreak here, okay? We're talking about um, betrayal, backstabbing, heartbreak, whatever, heartache, all that stuff. Ten of Swords, the Hanged Man. Um, so, both of these energies feel like they're somewhat in the past. Um, some of you may still be in a bit of a hanged man state, but it's all about gaining that new perspective. And that's what we were talking about yesterday in Morning Coffee, um, working on seeing things differently. And that is absolutely the point here. Um, it's, it's not about, especially with the Ten of Swords, the Ten of Swords being a completion, the ending of a terrible cycle or a terrible situation, the worst being behind you. It's not about seeing the pain and the hurt and holding on to it it's about looking at it for what it is what it has taught you what it can teach you and how you can grow from it that is the new perspective that you need to work on achieving and many of us are achieving um, these cycles are not going to clear out you're not going to be able to be out of this precarious position or you're not going to be able to close out these really painful situations between the ten of swords and the three of swords until you see it differently what is seeing it differently well it starts with removing working towards coming out of the victim mentality what was me everything happens to me i'm a a, 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 a trash can for people's bullshit whatever whatnot Seeing it, continuing to see it that way, where that may have served you at one point, that's only going to take you so far. Instead, it's time to start recognizing that, yes, we do, in fact, create our own realities. And we don't do it just to hurt ourselves. We all go through difficult situations, okay? But we're not doing it just to hurt ourselves. For the most part, some of us, myself included, was in such a state that it was like, I was continuing to perpetually create negative situations for myself because I didn't, I didn't love myself enough to create something different. Well, you're not going to come out of that situation until you start to see things differently, until you start to really learn the lessons behind these negative situations that you may find yourself in. Now, that doesn't mean that once you learn, you're not going to experience anything negative ever again. That's still kind of part of our lives here. It's part of our trajectory. It's part of, you know, moving from 3D to 5D and all that. But at least you'll have a better state of mind. You'll have a better peace of mind, more self-respect, more love for yourself, right? Yeah. Okay. So then we get into the shadow work. Just some clarification there, please. Spirit, shadow work. Ooh. My, my, my. Look at that, you guys. Okay, so all of the cards for actual shadow work fell out face down. But we got the Ten of Cups that fell out on Moonchild with the Ten of Swords and the Hanged Man. You see, healing, ultimate fulfillment, maybe even family. But getting to shadow work, this is, this is a gorgeous message. Look, getting to shadow work, underneath the deck you have, at the, at the root bottom of the reading, you have the Three of Cups. This is a union card. This is celebration. This is, this represents uh, as far as unions go, and especially with as far as inner union goes, it represents the 
um, the union of body, mind, and spirit. And that is absolutely what shadow work will do for you. Booyah, queen of wands, six of pentacles, page of pentacles, and the page of wands. My, my, my. So the queen of wands is an energy of, um, I just heard self-fulfillment, self-sufficiency, definitely, um, pride, honor, charisma, self-love, absolutely self-love, um, self-belief, beauty, attractiveness, um, Wow. Okay, so I recently I have been saying that in my opinion, the Queen of Wands is um, the physical embodiment of the law of attraction because she knows how to use her charismatic, her magnetic, her magical abilities to basically attract anything that she wants and desires towards her like a magnet, right? Um, because she's in alignment with it, really. But also, what I'm seeing in the Queen of Wands now is the embodiment of self-love and joy and, com yes, and compassion, but just loving yourself so much that nothing can stop you. Nothing can get you down. And that is the energy that will bring you everything you want. With the Six of Pentacles also, it's the balance between give and take. I really do feel like many of us during this shadow period, the shadow work period, excuse me, um, we're learning how to love ourselves. We're learning how to give back to ourselves. We're learning where our boundaries lie when it comes to giving and receiving. Have we been giving too much? Have we been taking too much? Balancing that out. But this is the Six of Pentacles um, in terms of your own self. How do you give to yourself? How do you allow yourself to receive? Because many of us, at least for many of the, the collective that I'm channeling for, we're very much givers and we tend to overgive. But now, this period of shadow work is helping us learn to love ourselves and to give back to ourselves. And I love the fact that as I was pulling clarification for shadow work, the Ten of Cups flew out. Okay? Because this is that ultimate emotional fulfillment. You can see, I've been seeing tens lately as um, lessons learned, right? Mostly it was in the Ten of Pentacles, but now I'm seeing it in all of them. The Ten of Swords being how to use your mind effectively instead of allowing it to get in your way or to be destructive using your thoughts and beliefs against yourself. The Ten of Cups, learning to love yourself. Connecting with that inner child. Look at these these two children. The, is there just two of them? Yeah, the two little boys here. And connecting with that inner that sense of inner joy and happiness and and fulfillment and love for yourself. Learning that lesson. That is what the moon child situation has helped us to understand. The shadow work is that deep work that is getting us to this place of self respect, self love, and the balance between give and take with ourselves and with the people around us in our relationships. And so we have, as a result, the Page of Pentacles and the Page of Wands. In this deck, the Epic Tarot, pages are um, unicorns, which I absolutely love. Queens are griffins. No, queens are phoenixes. Knights are griffins, kings are dragons. And also in this deck, the Wands suit is the suit of books. Um, a new level. The Page of Pentacles to me is absolutely a representation of um, a level up because you are reaching a new level, potentially having to find your footing again, something like that. The Page of Wands is self-discovery. 
also renewed passion, excitement, exuberance for life. Um, for some of you, you might be, you might be looking at, <laughs> look, watching the video like uh, with a screw face talking about renewed passion. I don't know about that right now. Well, it's coming. It, it's, you're on the way. Um, and it's not something that you would necessarily want to just explode into your life like that. I, this, at this point, we've matured enough to know that slow and steady absolutely does win the race. Slow cultivation of something is better than all of a sudden just boop, you've got like this big old fire that you have to deal with. Instead, working with it slowly over time to build and build and build so it's sustainable, right? There it is, sustainable. This is a really beautiful reading, guys. So it really looks like what we were talking about yesterday in gaining some sort of new perspective, that's happening. Slowly but surely, it's happening. And honestly, that is all you need. You don't have to rush any of this, okay? Let's get some oracle guidance from the unicorns. Again, because re I'm really feeling the unicorns right now. And then we're gonna close the reading with the oracle message from the crystal mandala deck, yes? Alrighty, guys. Oh, oops. All right, spirit. Best message for today. For the collective. In terms of this reading here, dance. Yes. One more. Okay. One more, please, spirit. No. Ah, there it is. And wow. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so first we have dance. Move your body to music. Dance with the rhythm of life. Manifest your dreams through dance. And this absolutely uh, is speaking to, it's almost mirroring the, uh, the energies of Moonchild because I'm seeing this as dancing with the flow of the universe, dancing with the flow of your own self, yes? And you see there's that full moon back there behind that unicorn. But I'm laughing, I'm laughing so hard because there was one more card that wanted to come out and it just so happens to be patience. And didn't that come out yesterday? Mm-hmm, I'm pretty sure it did. Patience, pause before you take action. Trust that divine timing is at work. Be patient and play whilst you wait. And this is exactly what I was talking about with the Page of Wands energy. Slowly but surely cultivating this new exuberance, this new excitement for life again, and your path and where you're going and what you, you're trying to achieve. I mean, yes, <laughs> yes, I love it. Okay, let's close out the reading here with Oracle Guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck. Just one card, please spirit. Best message, please. Best message, please, spirit. Alrighty, guys. To close out the reading for today, Tuesday, March 26th. Best, there it is. Okay. Let's see what we've got. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you so much, spirit. Card number 33, Ascended Master Helios and Citrine your time to shine gosh gosh there we go okay your time to shine we bring you the blessing of your time to shine on the divine path you gain empowerment through surrender and alignment with divine consciousness greater than your own as you choose to surrender into higher consciousness through prayer and intention, you are held in a field of divine protection. 
You also gain strength, wisdom, and understanding. You release fear and gain love's power. You become increasingly radiant, discovering more of your own divine identity. At some point on your path, whilst this is always happening for you on the inner planes, you will be ready to perform a similar function on the outer planes in the world of forms. This is when you will be asked to bravely shine your light to help those in need, perhaps lost in darkness of some sort in the physical world. Wow. Um, <clears throat> okay, I want to read these two paragraphs and then that'll be it. During this sort of spiritual task where you are exposed to darkness so you can bring your light there, you will be assisted by many unconditionally loving beings in the spiritual worlds. This is why you are not alone. You will feel comfort connection and perhaps be surprised that although your mind may struggle with isolation at times, your heart will feel deeply connected to spirit. Often during such a task, your spiritual connection becomes even stronger because it has to, so you feel sustained. There may be times where you wish there were others who could see things as you do. It's as if you are a black sheep or a lone wolf trying to share a language of love that those around you don't seem to understand. Yet this is how you know your light is being put to service by the divine plan. During this time, you will earn your spiritual stripes, so to speak. You will learn how to bring yourself back to your inner truth again and again. You will be the, quote, man on the ground, whilst spiritual headquarters keeps an eye on what's happening in the divine playground, which sometimes feels more like a battlefield of Mother Earth. You will be strengthened and guided by the divine as you offer yourself as a powerful player for the team of love to manifest its helping hand in the world. You must acknowledge not only how much you are supported, but also your own courage commitment and conviction to be able to take on this task. It means a lot to many hearts. Your work has value and your dedication is noted by the spiritual worlds. In fact, you were chosen for this task because of the compassion, love, brightness, and power of your spirit. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful. Oh, darn it. I forgot to mention in the beginning of the reading, but we are doing happy hour tonight, okay? So if you would like to get in on that, go ahead and um, get yourself on the list. You can just send payment to my PayPal account. And yeah, I have nine slots available so far, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah? Anyway. I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to connecting with you again very soon, either tonight or tomorrow for our next cup of coffee. Yeah? <laughs> Take care. Mwah. Bye.